first of all, I want to start. My title has changed, and the title is Targeted um, uh, Molecular Signatures of um, uh, Diffuse Large B-cell Lymphoma or Large B-cell Lymphoma. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm more convinced, or like I think the whole community is more convinced, that DLBCL is a very heterogeneous disease, has multiple copy number alterations, mutations, and structural variants, and that uh, one of the key components is to um, understand um, the union of these and not look at a single mutation or single copy number alteration in order to make informed decisions how to stratify patients and tailor therapy. So I guess one of the things um, we used to paradigm here was basically that um, we uh, did a comprehensive genomic study of um, two um, more rare but very inferior um, patient groups. Um, one which is CNS lymphomas, primary CNS lymphomas, and secondary and, and primary testicular lymphoma. So we applied genomics to those and asked what are dominant genomic signatures which we can see in these patients with the um, um, idea to um, um, tease those apart which, which are actionable. And I think I um, made very clear that there are um, actually three things. So uh, CNS lymphoma and testicular lymphoma harbor complex copy number alterations which are similar to that seen in systemic DLBCLs. However, the mechanism of perturbation is different. While two-thirds of DLBCL have multiple alterations perturbing these, CNS and testicular lymphoma have high grade loss of CDKN 2A. So different ways to come to the same conclusion. The reason this is relevant is actionable. You can apply um, CDK inhibitors to these particular group of tumors. And um, second main point, I guess, from, from my talk was that um, by doing integrative genomics using exome sequencing and RNA-seq, we identified um, a dominant near uniform activation of toll like receptor signaling pathways by either activating mutations of MyD8 or um, co copy number gain of a a downstream activator. And that's relevant because you have targeted agents which can uh, perturb uh, BCR and toll like receptor signaling. I haven't mentioned so far that these are largely concordant with um, um, activating mutations of the BCR signaling component, which distinguish these types of tumors from systemic DLBCL. And I guess the most important part is that we um, identified in CNS lymphoma and testicular lymphoma as seen in a different subtypes called P primary media standard lymphoma. Um, um, a copy number gain um, of PDL1 and PDL2. These are two molecules which are in the moment very hip because um, actually you have um, a compound which can block these interaction. And um, uh, I think these are the um, important facts. And um, I think I've shown what are the molecular mechanisms, how you can upregulate these. Um, I think these um, immune, so the genetic basis for PD1 mediated immune evasion is targetable. And we went ahead in a um, um, case control, uh, in, a, in a small handful of patients with informed consent and an off label use to test if this hypothesis that these patients which have the genetic basis of PD1 deregulation can be treated. And we, 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 I showed a patient who has a primary refractory CNS lymphoma, and if, uh, which, 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 we, which we could treat with this in, um, antibody and the patient uh, went from hospital to a normal lifestyle, and that's impressive for a disease where you usually die. So I think I alluded to the point that the dominant genetic signature of PD-1 deregulation in these two diseases, uh, plus the fact that we have this initial clinical response from our first couple of patients, led to the development of a national and international trial, which will open in this particular relapse and refractory setting in the next couple of weeks. And we hope that this um, will be a solid founding for um, a very inferior patient population.